for you guys to get the secret word, you got to try all of these hot sauce. <laughs> and we will email you the secret word. That is how you get past the gatekeeper. All right, welcome back to Discovery Expo, everybody. And we are nearing the end of our week and we have our final episode of Burning Questions, where we ask burning hot questions while we eat burning hot wings. I'm your host, Ryan J. Whitehead. And with me today uh, is our guest, Sophia. Sophia, what's up? Hey, how are you? How's your stomach? Uh, it's an iron stomach, man. It's just, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's surviving. That's for sure. It's surviving. It's a real burn. Barely. And you're gonna, you're gonna join us in some burning today. But uh, first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Hey, my uh, Topcat teams. Great job in the last season. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sophia, I'm a territory manager on the Canadian team um, for Toronto or GTA West. Um, and I've visited a lot of your stores uh, just to say what's up and how about here and there. So it's, uh, thanks for having me here, Ryan. Uh, thanks for coming. So uh, today we are talking about communication. Is that right? Yes, I didn't hear you. What was that? <laughs> it... I'm going to show you how to effectively communicate today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can all hear you loud and clear. Okay. Even with all burning sauces. <laughs> All right, so that being said, I'm glad you introduced the sauce. So are you a spicy person? Do you go into a restaurant and be like, give me the spiciest you got? Absolutely not. Oh. My, my place is honey garlic, honey barbecue, and that's it. I love it. So, yeah. Actually, fun fact, I just realized that we were, uh, we were talking about honey garlic, and I realized in the U.S. they don't have honey garlic. What? It's like how they don't have ketchup chips. You guys are missing out. <laughs> you guys are missing out. But but I'm sure you guys have these hot sauces, so let's get into it. So let's start with the first hot sauce. Now, I have here Frank's Red Hot Original. What did you get? Frank Red Hot Buffalo. Buffalo. Gotta give it a little spin there. <laughs> All right, nice buffalo taste. So let's uh, let's put it on our first wing. Let's deep dive into it, and then we'll ask our first question. Now, rule of thumb with the hot sauce: before you before you just serve it, you gotta shake it first, and then after it's all shook up, ooh, you're gonna pour out these. Want to be careful as you pour it out because it may come out a little clunky at first, and then it'll slip out. Balance on it. All right, there we go. Four or five drops should do it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You said it. You, you warned me. To be fair. Yeah. You totally warned me on that. All right, so you're gonna lift your wing, raise it high, show off a little bit of that sauce. Cheers. Cheers. Take a bite. Oh. <laughs> okay. Cause you know what? it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. I think buffalo is like a little sour, and I don't, and like I appreciate that sour, sour touch to it. So it's kind of distracting me away from the spice. Oh, that's good. There you go. Yeah. It looks like you're also. Was, sorry, it looks like you're also eating like a chicken nugget. Yeah. So my logic behind this is there's no bone in a nugget or a chicken bite to prohibit me from eating like the whole chicken if I need to dilute the hot sauce a little bit more. <laughs> so, taking a little bit of a strategic uh, aspect to this. So let's, let's talk about communication. So when people think communication, they obviously think of verbal communication. What are some right. other effective ways of communication? Yeah, so they all work really well together if you learn how to kind of master all the different kinds. But uh, to start off, yes, verbal communication is one form of communication. There's also nonverbal, so it's your body language and the different kind of gestures that you use. Um, there's also written communication, so when you are either like texting somebody or sending an email. Um, and then the last form of communication is visual. So what are you showing them? 
do you use tables? Do you use demos in your cases? Um, those kind of things that give them more of a visual feel of what you're trying to say as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So every everything conveys information. The way you move, the way you speak, the way you, you know, the way you look. Even you never know anything, anything. Mm -hmm. And talking. It's one thing for you to to say that you know this this uh, hot sauce is not spicy, but if I am literally like panting and like kind of like drinking water, my body language is telling you the complete opposite thing. All right, so let's do it. Um, have you had Tabasco before? No. No. Okay. No spice ever. No spice ever. Okay. I usually see this beside ketchup in restaurants, so I, I always notice it, but just yeah. quickly move on. Yes. Okay. okay. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. I don't want to ruin the whole wing here. <laughs> <laughs> you did the spell test first. And bad communication says it all. <laughs> <laughs> they even have to say anything. That's my verbal communication there. All right, so. Yeah, this right. yeah we're going to cheers the wing. There's the sauce. Let's go. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Do not like the sour on that. Oh, it's on my lips. Oh, I got some on my lips. No, don't get it on your lips. Oh. Mm. All right, so now that we've had our burning hot wing, let's ask the burning hot question. What are some tips of effective communication? Yeah, so it really depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> This thing comes slowly. It's a slow burn. And it okay, so, mm -hmm. I mean, if you guys um, are at your stores, the three uh, main types of people that you'll be talking to are your fellow colleagues, um, your managers, and I could say probably most importantly, your customers. So if you're speaking with your colleagues, like I've seen different kind of relationships. Some of them are more casual. Some of them are, are more like business-like and formal. I would, I would pick my communication style based on that kind of relationship. You know, I know like a lot of people become friends while they're at work, so it's a little bit more casual, but some other people prefer to take a more, um, you know, like professional and business approach, and that's really cool too. I think the most important thing to remember is you both have the same end goal. Like you're trying to reach your targets, you're trying to help the customer out. So uh, to, regardless of if you rather kind of be taken more casually or more uh, business-like, um, you just have to focus on the main goal there. That's in terms of communicating uh, with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. That's actually interesting because uh, on the on the last, or sorry, on, I keep saying on the last, on the first episode with <laughs> Sasha, um, he was talking about goals and having goals and, and making sure you have these smart goals and that allows you to grow. But I, I like that now communication plays a very uh, intricate role with having goals and making sure that you both meet those goals by using communication. So I like that. That's it's towards the same thing, right? You don't want to be going head to head, you know, going in opposite directions or literally pulling in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. I think um, one of the biggest tips if you're you are helping a colleague out in, um, you know, helping someone to a customer, yeah. it's a good point to ask them what they've talked about already. Mm -hmm. But you don't want if you know your colleague says. A, B, and C. You don't want to go against the points that they already brought. So it's a good kind of um, good like approach to ask them, okay, what have you guys talked about yet? What is um, said customer is looking for? That way you're not going against it and everything's kind of like out in the open. Mm -hmm. All right, Sophia, round three. Here we go. You, you're like, I'm good. This hasn't killed me yet. You know, and what, in my and what hot sauce doesn't kill your taste buds only makes them stronger. So let's, uh, let's get your third one out here. <laughs> and uh, so for me, I got this Louisiana, the perfect hot sauce. And I love how it says one drop does it. So that is, I'm going gonna... to... I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna stick with its rule of one hot sauce does it. And what did you what did you get? 
got myself, I don't even know what it's called. It's probably too hot to name it anything, but it's a uh, front street heat. Mm -hmm. Canada's premium hot sauce. Oh, it's a Can hot Canadian sauce. hot sauce. There you go. Canadian hot sauce. So I'm looking at the ingredients here and it includes red peppers, chipotle, uh, jalapenos, and habanero. All right. Yeah, so we'll see. All right, let's do it. So shake it up, crack it open, and be very, very cautious. Very gentle. Oh, oh no, okay, I did two drops, so I'll... That's <laughs> it for me, guys. I, you graduated from the one drop. After a, a couple of these sessions, you graduated. Congratulations. <laughs> Raise the wing, cheers. Cheers. All right, here we go. Okay, this was not so bad. Maybe I need to put more on. Should I try another Ooh. thing a little bit more? I'd say go for it. If you still have chicken nugget left and you didn't feel it, put it on there. I want to do our viewers justice, okay? Ooh. If you guys don't see me in stores after this, well, you probably can guess what happened. <laughs> okay. Okay. For the record, I put a lot more than I did earlier, so. <laughs> Nope, not seeing any burn there. Just look. <laughs> no, I think I left out. Oh, uh, Canada. Or maybe mm -mm. it's the Discovery Expo gods looking out for me because this next sauce might be the death of me. So it's giving me a little bit of a break. That's fair. All right. Well, hey, it wasn't uh, wasn't too bad. So I'll take it. Mm. So okay, tell us. So we were talking a little bit about little bit about customers and communication with customers so really let's let's deep dive into it a little bit more so what about what is it about our customers that communi communication plays that role mm -hmm. so we spoke about the four different methods of communication and i think especially with your customers like using all four of them is going to be very um important if you use it the right way so when you're speaking to them verbally verbally you want to speak to them confidently, right? They're coming to you to ask for your help to pick out a game console or accessory or a laptop. And it's okay if you don't have all the answers, but the important thing is either to speak confidently or be transparent and let them know, I don't have the exact answer. Let me find somebody to help me out or let me search it up. Mm -hmm. um, that way, at least they know that you're not just, you're looking out for them, right? Um, you also want to take your time, like I find a lot of the customers that come in, especially for laptops or even, I guess, consoles, um, are parents or older people who don't know the difference between different processors or um, solid state drive or RAM or even like what a game console is. And we live and breathe all of this. So us talking about it just becomes second nature and you just, you know, talk very casually about it and you tend to talk a little bit faster. Um, I And I've seen a lot of these like parents or they've been like, older customers be very appreciative when you slow down a little bit and take the time to explain what a processor is, what is RAM, what is solid state drive, and explain to them why it's beneficial. Not just that, you know, an i5 is better than an i3 or an i7 is better than an i5. Like taking the time to explain that to them, like they really appreciate that. And then they and then you went over their trust and they're more likely to purchase whatever you're suggesting to them because you make them feel confident in what they're going to buy. Mm -hmm. Oh, excellent. And then, we're, mm -hmm. right. and then all of that goes hand in hand with like nonverbal communication too, right? Like um, you want to make them feel like you're listening to them. So whatever they're, um, they're telling you, even if you may not agree, nod your head and repeat what they're saying as opposed to, you know, just shaking their head. Mm -hmm. Uh, shaking your head while they're talking because now it just makes them feel like you don't agree with them and they don't know what they're talking about and they become a little bit defensive all right sophia you you've handled it well you uh you know rav rav hit some speed bumps sasha hit every speed bump and uh, <laughs> i feel like i just smashed into a wall yes 
<laughs> yeah, no, that definitely, I feel like a fire truck was definitely needed. Um, so that being said, you're on your fourth and final hot sauce here. Now, um, I have done this before. I've had this one before, but this time I'm going to be a little bit more brave and put a little bit more sauce on mine. This is a Jolakaya ghost pepper. Uh, this is the rebel hot sauce. It says mental hot sauce. And uh, it also suggests not to uh, put in your children. So this is a, this is an intense hot sauce. So this is one I'll be using for my wing. And what will you be using for yours? I'll be using Nando's Peri Peri sauce, XX hot. So not just hot sauce, it's XX hot sauce. And if you were to look at the back, they have a little chili pepper of the order of the hotness mm -hmm. and it's literally off the chili pepper. So. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little more loaded with this one. I'm gonna do the same with you, Ryan. Go big or go home. It's the last one, right? Yeah. You got all the fun you needed. No so regrets. I don't make this. No regrets. Oh boy. Okay. It smells very fresh though. Mine smells like fire. Oh. I don't know if you saw that, but I just—you know what? Yolo. I don't know. If this is my best life or my worst life, but we'll we'll find out. All right. Cheers, guys. Ooh. Okay. Cheers. I taste like Sprite. Oh, until it hits. Oh. Oh, that was a mistake. No regrets. <laughs> oh. Oh no, I got the hiccups. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> I <swear. laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Mm. The hiccups are making it worse because it's like bringing back up that heated air. Oh my God. Okay. It's just coming in waves and waves. That was a mistake. Oh my God. Oh, it's a lingering burn. Oh, oh my God. It is. Oh. Like my whole body is heating up right now. Like I can't focus, my mind's just numb. I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have put like four or five drops that. Oh my god. How's your how's your burn? Describe your burn. Using effective communication. <laughs> okay. Well you can tell by my non-verbal communication that it is burning. <laughs> but it's like very those like warm burns that like just goes through your whole body and up to your head. And like I feel like I can't focus right now because it's just like up, like it's literally like right here. <laughs> and to pop it off, my mouth is burning. And I think I got some on my tongue. It's still burning. Uh, oh yeah. It's just like something grabbing onto the side of my head. It's not a good idea. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the question and I'm gonna chug this glass of milk immediately after. Woo! what death feels like. Fiery. Fiery death. Oh my god. Death. Okay. Okay. So Sophia, with the fourth fourth wing and the fourth hot sauce in there. What what are some barriers of communication? I'm gonna stop right there. Just go, <laughs> go ahead. What are some barriers to communication? Just go. Just go. The first one is hot sauce. For people like me and you, that is the first barrier of communication. But um, for people who can handle hot sauce, um, there's a couple barriers of communication that you kind of want to be cognizant of when um, you're talking to literally anybody. Um, if you want to pass on your messaging in the most efficient and effective and concise way. The first one would be stress and emotion. So, emotion is great. 
if you're not crying and dying from hot sauce. Um, but it lets you be enthusiastic about what you're talking about. Um, but the negative emotions are the stuff and the kind of things that will be a barrier to uh, your communication. Um, you know, ev anyone, everyone's coming into the store to ask for your help and they don't want to hear or just kind of feel like a dampening kind of feel if, you know, you had a fight at home or you had something bad happen to you. I know it's totally normal and natural for, you know, for us to react to things, but when you're coming into work, it's always good to kind of leave your problems at the door. And I find that like when I do go into stores, anything that I am kind of negatively feeling, it's kind of gone when I'm in the store because I'm talking to all of you guys um, and it's just always a great conversation. So kind of just have that mentality um, if you are having a bad day. Um, and you also want to be aware of any inconsistent or negative body language. So we touched upon that a little bit with nonverbal communication. If you're saying one thing, don't let your body language um, portray something else. Um, and that also includes if you want to, if you're slouching or you're just leaning on uh, certain things, it just makes them feel like you don't really care about what you're telling them about or even just like their issues and what they need um, a solution for. And last but not least, I think this is kind of dying out now, lack of focus. So you want to give your customers your undivided attention. Um, but I know that sometimes, you know, there's, it's really busy and there's a whole bunch of other customers who are waiting for your help. It's always good to acknowledge those waiting customers <clears throat> and let them know that you will be right with them or that uh, you will call somebody to help them out. But just remember that the first customer you're talking to, they got there first and you do owe them your attention. Um, so make sure they're being taken care of, but just don't completely ignore everybody else. Well, Sophia, but that is important. That is really important, you know, and uh, sorry, I, I also drenched myself in water. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think I heard. Be conscious of hot sauce you choose. Yes. If it says hot, it's not lying. <laughs> I'm you that it's hot. Yeah. Well, listen, you know what? Uh, it's great having you on here. We had a great time. Uh, I'm sure the viewers had a great time watching us just uh, ruin Bye. taste for the rest of our lives. <laughs> oh man, I almost forgot. And I think I, I kind of like, feel like I'm gonna start to hallucinate soon. Secret word. <laughs> Did we even talk about the secret word? <laughs> no, we didn't. You, for you guys, to get the secret word, you gotta try all of these hot sauces. <laughs> we will email you the secret word. That is how you get past the gatekeeper. Oh, yeah, no, I, I would love to do that. But the secret word is language, guys. So make sure you use the secret word language uh, in the quiz. And uh, whoo, yeah, language is your secret word. So that is, it. <laughs> that is it for us. Sophia, thank you so much for coming on, burning questions today, and handling those uh, burning questions and those burning hot wings. And uh, that is it for us here at Discovery Expo this week. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We got our Kahoot quiz uh, based on everything you guys learned this week uh, with Rav, Sasha, and Sophia. So uh, check it out. And uh, I'm gonna go pass out now. <laughs> Uh, the stream will be live as, as our streams always are from 11 a.m. to uh, 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that is it. Thank you so much. Do your quizzes. Discovery Expo Season 2. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. <laughs>